Lord God. Praise right now in the house of the Lord. Because Jesus made it possible. Amen. 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 The sound of my voice goes down. Jesus made it possible. Come on, come on. I'm talking to myself right now. Jesus made it possible. You're here and breathing God's fresh air. Jesus made it possible. Come on, we want to give God the best praise that you can give. Come on, all the stuff out in the right now. This is the day that the Lord has made. You ought to rejoice and be glad in it. To God be the glory for the wonderful things that He has done. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. It's raining on the outside, but the Spirit of the Lord should be on the inside. If I gotta pray from all by myself on this Sunday morning, I'll do that. But if you got a brother in your body, you ought to help me lift up the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Just a few announcements before we go right into our worship service. Just a few announcements as we go right into our worship service. Thank you for a wonderful night of Watch night service on Friday night. Yes, Lord. We thank God for those that participated, that came out just to hear a word from the Lord on that night. We thank God for our associate ministers who delivered a five-minute to seven-minute sermonette. And if you were here, you ought to uh, come on. Amen. They, they delivered in such a profound way that they did an excellent job on their five minutes or seven minutes sermon and I'm appreciative of all of them how they stepped in and stepped up and gave God their best. So we thank God for all of our associates here at the Mount Zion Baptist Church. January the 8th, January the 8th is next weekend and we want to just bring to your attention that we will be doing vaccinations here. DHEC will be here on Saturday to do vaccinations from 10 to 2 p.m. 10 to 2 p.m. And uh, the flyers on the website, they're doing young adults, young children from five and up, I think, and then, of course, the 16, 17 year olds uh, as well. But the adults will definitely be on the list. Please, please, ma'am, and please, sir, I can't tell you, I can't beg you how to get your vaccination. But I'm asking you to do it in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you to do it for you and for your loved ones. As you can see, this virus is taking off in an uploading way. And I don't want to have to close church down again. That's, that's, that is my prayer. That we don't have to shut church down again. Church has never been shut down as much as it did in this last year. And we need the church. We need the church to survive. But I also need you to survive. And the way we do that is by getting our vaccinations. Some say that I'm not taking the vaccination because I can still catch COVID. That is true. That is so true. But without the vaccination, you might catch death. There's only one way to look at it. Either you want to live or either you want to die. But you need to get your vaccinations. Right now, this virus is spreading like wildfire. And we've got to continue to keep the church open because we need the church to survive. So we thank God for the act that is partnering with us on next weekend to do our vaccinations here. Pray for the sick and the shut in continuously those that are in the hospitals, those that are dealing even with COVID and those that are just dealing with sickness, either their homes or either in the hospital, pray for them right now. Uh, continuously to pray for the Mount Zion Baptist Church as we continuously to move forward in this 2022 year. God has given us a, a vision on this 22 year and I hope that we can come together and, and, and come together as a body of Christ and move the church to the next level. That's what God is asking us to do in this new year. This is a new season, this is a new year. And 
I hope that you have your hearts and your minds prepared for what God has in store for us. And so continue to pray for what we're trying to do. Our October rally, I wanted to mention that. Our October rally, thank God for those that always involve Mr. Rico White and Ms. Belinda Turner and, and, and those, uh, uh, Kim Norman, that, those that take care of our finances. Our October rally, uh, on October 24th, we raised uh, $5,555 was raised on, on the 24th. And then from the November the 1st of 20 to 21 of 19, 12, 19, 21, we raised a total of $21,595. That's something you all can pray for. Amen, amen, and to God be the glory. We thank God for our October rally and those that have given and those that continue to give. And if you have not sold your seed for this year, you can still do so. There's envelopes available. So when you see this, something that you want to do just to say to God, God, I want you to do this for me in this year. There's no certain amount. You just give to according to your heart. And once you give, God will take care of the rest. And so we thank God for you. We thank God for all our departments here at the Mount Zion Baptist Church that we can come together and give God praise for what he's doing for us on this first Sunday of this new year. Come on, give God a hand.
first Sunday of the new year. I'm going to ask God to, if you believe in the word of God, to hear our prayer on this morning. You can take it. Thank you, Pastor. That song will speak what? Thank God. Allow us to be you once again. John 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things was made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the light was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God who name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to be a witness of that light. That was the true light which shines every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as men had received him, to them gave the power to become the Son of God, even to them that believe on his name. God be Somebody, and that somebody is you, Lord. You and your son Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you. 
How many choose to worship this morning? In spite of what's going on around us, we choose to worship Him.
choose to worship. Thank you, Praise Team. There's a word from the Lord on this first Sunday of the new year. Exodus, the 17th chapter. Exodus, the 17th chapter. Focusing on verse 8 through 16. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Riverdale. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said unto him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed, and when he let down his hands, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat there, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Joshua did discomforted of Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in the book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of Jehovah's. For he said, Because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation generations. The word of God for the people of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for who you are. We thank you because you thought it not wrong to wake us up this morning. We thank you for Father because when we woke up this morning, we had the activity of our limbs and we were able to breathe your fresh air. Father, we come this morning on this first Sunday of the New Year just to say thank you. When we look back over our life and see how you brought us over, we can't help but say thank you. When we look how tornadoes have just devastated at the end of this year. How fires have now burned a hundred homes. This weather is crazy right now. I don't know whether it's cold or whether it's hot. But all that says to us, Father, is that you are still in control. We thank you now for what you're going to do for us on this, in this season. We thank you now that we were able to, to hold our heads up and still make it through 21. We thank you because we've seen and unseen trials and tribulations. But Father, you were still good to us. We were able to still pay our bills. We were able to still keep the lights on. We were able to still have church worship. Father, only because of your grace and your mercy, we were able to continuously to go on and see what the end is going to be. Father, we don't know what 2022 is going to bring, but we stand ready and in the gap, waiting on your conversation. Waiting on your faithfulness. Waiting on your healing for us. Touch now, Father. Touch now this Mount Zion Baptist Church. We need you to touch it from the back door to the front door. From sidewalk to sidewalk. From the vestibule to the kitchen. From the kitchen to the, to the, to the learning center. 
Father, we need you to touch every part of this ground. And when we walk up on this ground, that everything is going to be all right. Oh, we need you, Father. We need you like we've never needed you before. Father, things are around us that are happening, and we don't know what's going to happen from day to day. But we know that you are still in control. Touch somebody right now who's got a heavy heart. Touch somebody now who's sick in their body. Touch somebody now who's looking for a financial breakthrough. Whatever you're in need of, Father, we give it all to you right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way in the service now, Father. Touch us where we need to be touched. Bless us right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. We'll be so kind to give you all the glory and the praise. It's not about me this morning, Father. It's all about you. Hide me behind the cross. And let your word go forth. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. All of God's people say amen. Amen. Exodus the 17th chapter, verse 8 through 16, and I promise you, I'm not going to be with you long. I'm still trying to get through watch night service. I promise you, I won't hold you long this morning. There is a word that God has given me from Exodus the 17th chapter. I want to preach on this subject this morning. Walking and talking with the Lord. Walking and talking with the Lord. We solicit your prayers. My brothers and my sisters on this morning, the first Sunday of the new year, has been some challenges for us in 2021 been through some things. We've lost some loved ones. We, we, we've seen folk drop right in front of our faces. We can't visit like we used to visit. All we can do is give a phone call and say we're thinking about you. There's been some trials and tribulations in 2021. And all of us have been through it. None of us have been exempt. But when we come to church, we come to give God praise. We come to let Him know how good He's been to us. And when we come into the sanctuary, we come to lift our hands towards heaven in almost a surrender to God to show God that we need his assistance. And true prayer, true prayer, true prayer with uplifted hands is us telling God I'm true about what I'm praying for. And it is motivated and activated only by throwing oneself fully on the mercy of God. And then boldly we need to ask for his assistance. In this text we see Moses is a good example of this. Because that staff, that, that rod Moses had in his hand was an emblem of leadership. It was an outward symbol of his authority and his ability to take leadership over the children of Israel. And as Moses lifted his hands, his staff in the act of yieldedness, the people of God got victory over their dreaded enemies, the Amalekites. You're going to have me preach this. But now when Moses' arms got heavy from holding them up too long, the Amalekites then prevailed over Israel. So then Aaron and Hur decided to set Moses on a stone. And Aaron was on one side and then 
Pierre was on the other side and they both held his hands lifted towards heaven. And as long as Moses' hands were lifted, God's people got the victory. Somebody gonna help me with this. And victory always comes from uplifted hands. You get victory over every life situation. You get victory over all of your enemies. You get victory on every circumstance and over every problem. Because it comes with lifted things towards heaven in prayer. Uh, Satan is not afraid of a Christian on his feet. Satan fears the believer who is always on his or her knees. Somebody's going to help me. Because in yielding, uplifted hands in prayer, you become the beneficiary of God who can provide whatever you need. And God provides and protects and shields only for those who surrender to him in prayer. And as we look at this text, there are three prayers. There are a couple of prayers that I want to discuss this morning. I may get only to one, but I want to get to it right now. That, that will help us in our prayer life. Uh -huh. First, there is a prayer of identification. Uh -huh. And an identification prayer sustains and, and it reveals and shapes the one who is doing the prayer. Uh -huh. It invites the Holy Spirit into your heart so that any sin that is lurking in the souls of your spirit your body, it can be revealed. And this kind of prayer not only shapes us and shapes our image, but it also sharpens our reality. This kind of prayer is not about transparency, but it's being vulnerable in our prayer. Because when you are transparent, you let people know only what you want them to know. But when you are vulnerable, it lets you in so that you will know my deepest and my darkest secrets. And only you can hurt me. Because you know the deepest secrets in me that makes me who I am. And, when, and, and, and we ought to invite God into every situation in our lives. So that when we get out of line, when we get in trouble, the search-like spirit can search our deepest heart. Because sometimes we are not even aware of what we're doing. And listen, whoever God uses greatly, he has to crush him deeply. Whoever has your ear has your destiny. And that kind of prayer scares uh, the unbeliever who's among us. Because God won't, won't be able to use you to any great measure until you come under his crushing. Amen. Remember Isaiah said that it was in the year that King Isaiah died. He was high and lifted up. His train filled the temple and his house was filled with smoke. And at the voice of them that cried, the doorposts were moved. Sarah filmed with six wings, and Isaiah said that when I saw it in my vision, I said, Whoa, it's me. Uh, for I am undone. I, I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. And he took live coals from the altar and touched Isaiah's lips. And I only was his lips cleansed, but his life was changed. Because crushing not only crushes you, but it changes you. Help me, Holy Ghost. Jacob, 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 the Bible says, wrestled with God. And it says he wrestled with God all night long. And Jacob said that I will not let you go until you bless me. Oh, somehow I ought to know what I'm talking about this morning. Jacob said that he wrestled with God uh -huh. all night long, and he said that I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. 
blessing. Yeah. And Jacob did some serious wrestling all night until the breaking of the day. Yeah. And when the day came, the angel said, Let me go. Yeah. And Jacob said, I, I will not let you go until you bless me. Yeah. And somebody missing what I'm saying.
some of us here, uh, 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 some of us, some of us are in here, but your mind already is somewhere on the other side of Greenfield. Yes, but I think I ought to remind us that if God wants to use us, then He's got to bring us through some stuff. Is there anybody? I told you I didn't want to hold you long. But God is doing something right now. Is there anybody? I'm trying to help somebody. I'm also trying to help myself. But is there anybody here who's been through a storm in 21? And it did not make you better. It just made you better.
God's hands is lifted to heaven. We're going to be all right. It's when God drops his hands that you need to be concerned. But as long as there's somebody on the left side and the right side holding up the Father, we're going to be all right. It's in his word. It's in the word of God. It's in the word of God. We should not be consumed. It's in the word of God. Come around, Thank you, Jesus. If you know it's nobody but Jesus.
Deacon Hawkins, I know we have not gotten any information, but we got two that has come this morning. And if you want to, however the Lord needs you, and you don't have to, I'm not pushing you to say anything. But if God has done something for you on your reason for coming, this is an opportunity for you to share why you have come, whether it's for Christian experience, whether you just need but come to a prayer, this is your opportunity right now to just tell us, tell God, not us, tell God your reason for coming. Good morning. Good morning. My reason for coming is to rededicate my life to Christ. Amen. This 2021 has been trying to for me, but I just keep holding on to God's hand. Yes. And I just want to do it for God. And I thank Pastor Bill for being in my life, and I thank this church for making me a better person. Thank you. Amen. Miss Carol is not a stranger here. She has been here. She's a warrior for the vineyard of God. She does things that we like her to do. She takes care of our sign out front. She's graciously is always willing and able to do what we like her to do in, in the body of Christ. And we thank God for her this morning. And whatever she's going through, whatever is on her heart, whatever the Lord is speaking to her right now, she wanted to come in the new year to say, God, I want to rededicate my life back to you. That's all you need to say. God has already accepted you back into his life. We will accept you into the Mount Zion, back into this church. We love you, Miss Carol. Thank you for coming. Yes, sir.
for every exhilarant here at the Mount Zion Baptist Church. We thank you, Father, for the leadership. We thank you that you can allow us to continue on without any hurt, harm, or danger. Now, Father, we come right now to bless these sacraments that have been taken to wash away all our sins. Yes, sir. Cleanse us right now. Renew us a right spirit. Please, please. The bread that represents your body, the blood, the, the wine that represents your blood, cleanse us with it right now. In the name of Jesus. We bless it. We ask your covering over it. It's in the mighty and precious name of Jesus we pray. And all of God's people say amen. Amen. Let us speak to our feet. Thank you so much. Bless your heart. 